Hey golfers, Drew Mahold here with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell. He's a master club fitter at Second Swing. Today, I brought my own driver in, a Ping G30 LST. Been using it for a few years now. And I wanted to test it out against the Ping G410 LST, try it out against the latest technology from Ping. I'm gonna hit some shots, then we're gonna look at the numbers. Uh, Thomas, what do you think we're gonna find? You know, interesting, you know, this, this model G30, it's what, five, six, seven years old, old now. You know, technology has changed over, over time. However, this club was very successful in its time. It was a great low spinning club. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you, you generate a lot of club, club speed, so it's the reason why you're playing it in, in your bag. I'm curious to see what happened with regards to looks, and I'm also curious to see with regards to direction. What we'll do is we'll hit a bunch of shots with both of them, and then we'll maybe see if we can make one, maybe one adjustment with the Ping G410 LST driver. I'm excited to hit them and, and see really what I'm missing out on, I guess, on the Ping G410 LST. Sounds good. Let's get after it. Still carried far though. That was, that was good news. Yeah, it felt solid. Yep. There's one that's going to go to the right too. That's good ball speed number. See, I've, I've liked the look of the, like, the matte black on the head. And then the, it looks like the turbulators on this from Ping are, on the G410 LST are way more pronounced than the G30. You basically took the words right out of my mouth right yeah. there. I was going to say they definitely do look a little more pronounced than mm -hmm. previous models. So you particularly fit into this club um, based on your club speed. You have a lot of speed. That sounded like you hit that really good. Yeah, oh, that yeah. One, that one was that what I've was, been looking for. That was uh, smoked. <laughs> All right. So we had a couple of good swings there with the G410. Let's jump back and hit yours a couple more times. So I'm going to see if you can outperform the new, the new technology here with your driver. Very nice. Yeah, those were a couple of really good swings hmm. to finish with. Let's jump back here to the G410 LST. That was nice. It's a little spinnier than most of mine, but. Well, even still, spin rate was at 2700. It's really not that bad. It flew a little higher, a little spinnier, but not yeah. as straight it went. So right. that's always important to note as well. Very nice. might draw a little bit. That was really good, really solid. Okay, so Drew, let's take a look at the six different shots that we hit with each club here to see if there's anything that stands out mm -hmm. to us. Um, before I do that, uh, we've got a couple of maybe outliers per club that we want to take out. So I'll notice this one that's flashing over here on the left. Let's take that one out. And then we've got one here with the Ping G410 LST. That's a little more over here to the right. So really interesting now, you know, take a look at the dispersion pattern. We'll notice with your driver, we had an issue, kind of mm -hmm. missed it more to the right. You can't go wrong, obviously, with that yellow circle. That was right. pretty consistently kind of right up the middle of the, of the, of the, of the fairway there, too. So that's always important to take a look at, too. Um, now, the reason why I wanted you to hit three shots first with, the, with yours, then come back, and then come back again, is because I wanted to see if there was any difference in, in club speed at all. Um, what's interesting is, I don't know if you were just excited to hit the new one or not. <laughs> Maybe. But you were about just over two mile an hour faster with the new G410 than you were with the G30. That's a little surprising. Yeah, it's a little surprising. You know, I noticed, I felt like maybe the club with the G410 maybe felt slightly lighter. Now they're the same golf shaft, but I don't know if there's enough okay. to do with that or whether it's to do with the more pronounced turbulators giving more of an aerodynamic dynamic feel. Mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't have expected maybe two mile an hour difference right. between that. Because normally your club speed really doesn't change too much if you're swing with the yeah. same kind of weighted club. Huh. So that's always interesting to take a look at. You know, the reason I bring that up is, yes, the ball speed was slightly higher with the G410, 172.6, 171.3, but 
take a look at Smash Factor with your driver. Smash Factor with yours, 1.5 every single time. We had one miss set here that was 1.47. Um, with the G410, hmm. we didn't get to 1.5. So we noticed we're between kind of 1.47 and 1.49, averaging at 1.48. So that's always really interesting to take a look at those numbers. Um, you now, the reason why your particular driver may not have gone far is, you know, it was spinning a little bit more. It was favoring out to the right side. So yeah. you had these three over here that were kind of, you left the face yeah. open on and kind of went over there. For some reason, though, with the G410, you were able to square that club face up better. Yeah. It just may have just suited your eye a little bit better, which is always important for us to, to notice as well. Um, what I found really interesting is, obviously, I mentioned you've got a lot of speed. Take a look at the, to the spin rate. Your spin rate was still under 2,000 RPMs, even, even um, with the amount of speed that you generate. Uh, you're hitting about 95 feet in the air with 1,800 RPMs of spin. You know, we may, I may want to play around just a little bit more, a little more loft to see what would mm -hmm. happen if I did get that spin rate up a little bit. But I don't want to affect that dispersion. Yeah. At the end of the day, that dispersion was you know, really, really mm -hmm. solid across the board. Numbers with your driver, you were leaving the face a little bit more open, so you were pretty much in the optimal ballpark with launch and spin, and but you got to pay attention to the height. Yeah. When you leave that face open, right. it's going to go a little higher. Yeah, like so. I said, I think when I do miss those ones out to the right, that's when they really balloon sometimes. I think that obviously, you know, we have 148 and 136 on a couple of those for height, yep. but kind of brought that number up. But when I do hit those solid ones, like I did with the G410 LST, and they're kind of, you know, that straight, maybe baby draw trajectory is usually they're usually a little below 100 feet or what they have been, at least what I see on the course. Yep. They're not as high as some of my playing partners that I've noticed. When they strike one, it goes a little bit higher than mine. What I was just looking at, I was just moving across the right side here. If you look at your attack angle, uh, sorry, your, your face angle number here, um, 1.6 degrees open with the G410. We look at your current gamer right now, G30, you know, it was open five degrees. So mm -hmm. that's right that re bull was kind of staying out to right. the right. For some reason, you just were able yeah, to get know. that club face some reason squared up a little I bit better. I was squaring up the G410 a little bit better. So I'd like to maybe make an adjustment or two to, to the G410 and just see if we can maybe maximize a little bit more distance here with the amount of speed that you present me. You know, I love the fact that your club speed's at 116 miles an hour and your bull speed's in the 170s. You know, obviously, it gives us potential for mm -hmm. to hit the bull really, really far. Um, I'm just curious to see if we get that spin rate up, maybe just to closer to 2,000 kind okay. of mark. So 1,700. My only concern with that one, you get you get a couple in there that were, you know, 1,310, right. 1,350. You know, those may be a little bit harder to you know to control. You Notice this, the carry distance on those ones were actually a little lower than the one that spun yeah. a little bit higher. So that's why it's important to kind of pay attention to carry distance with driver mm. as well. So went a long way. But it may not go a long way if it's really wet outside. Sure, yep. sure, yeah. That's why it's important to pay attention to, to those numbers. So let's see if we can make an adjustment or two with the Ping G410 LST to see if, it, if, if it's okay. worth it. All right, so you mentioned that you felt like the Ping G410 maybe felt like look, looking down it maybe had a little less loft than your, than your driver. So what I want to do is I actually want to just try a little bit more loft. Um, I'm going to put it up to 10 degrees. Okay. Just, just to, out of curiosity to see what happens. Just want to see if that bull, you know, maybe spins just a little bit more, and we can get that carry distance up just a little bit. Now, if you start spinning it too much, then you know, we know right. nine degrees is what your current dri driver's at. You know, we're in a good, we're in a good bull bark there anyway. Yeah, because I mentioned right away that it seemed like you know they were both at nine degrees, but it felt like the G410 LST. It whatever reason it looked at a dress like it had less loft, and this actually looks more like nine degrees you know, on my current driver, which yep. is interesting, but maybe that'll affect something here. Didn't hit it as solid. That was good. So that one was a good example right there. Your bull speed was still a little bit less than what, what it was at nine degrees, but your carry distance was up. Instead of yeah. that miss hit off the toe spinning at 1300, it spun at 1800. So yeah. stayed in the air, still went a decent distance because it carried almost 300 yards. Wow, that's actually, I'm surprised it carried that far, really. 
Because it launched a little higher. Because I, it's did. I mean, I didn't catch it perfect by any means. Interesting. Because I saw that on the screen in front of me here, I was like, "Wow, that is a lot higher than I expected it to go." Huh. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, you, your bull speed's definitely dropped. Dropped with. With the added loft, could be hit location a little bit too, um, but it definitely has dropped from being at 172. That one last one was 168, but it still carried 290, so I, and the yeah, spin rate was 1900. Yeah. So it was closer to what we're looking at around that 2000 mark. Yeah, because my carry distance with, I can definitely see based on the flight that it went, the carry distance was way better um, with the added loft, and my I didn't really lose any total distance for the most part. I mean it's. 315, 315 there and it's up there something. with the others, yeah. That's interesting, because my smash is only 145 there, which is a lot less than yeah. this, what we had on standard, but also the G30. Just tells me that that was just a little bit off-center. You didn't quite hit in the middle of the face. So. But I'll take that result. I'll take that every, any day every for, a, for a miss hit. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right, let's hit a couple more and see if you can get one couple out there. But that's, this is good, good results right there, seeing that bull spinning a little bit more. We go. Got you over 170. Spin rate was a little bit of a knuckleball on that one. That might be a similar result. Yeah, similar kind of result. No. What's interesting is the direction. So with your driver, when it was set at nine degrees, you said it, you know, you know, it's at nine degrees, but you were consistently missing it to the right. Mm -hmm. We put it up to 10 degrees, just makes it maybe look like it's got a little bit more loft on it. If you look at this purple circle versus the white circle, yeah. and even the yellow circle, it's consistently maybe hovering more towards the left-hand side or straighter as opposed to being up yeah. towards the right side too. We may not have picked up yardage, but we definitely get that ball from going to the right side as yeah. well. It definitely so. feels like, for whatever reason, I'm able to square this one up a little bit better. And if I was missing the like a, the center or around the center of the face, it seemed like it was more likely to be towards like the toe. Um, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So your smash factor definitely dropped. Yeah. Um, it was one four six versus one four eight with with the other one there. Um, with the exception of that last one, you were. Yeah, I mean, those you know, first couple with kind of carrying the same distance. Yeah. Spinning it, you know, well, the, the couple there, 1900, 1700, that got us, you know, to carry the ball a little further there, too. Um, but we really didn't see any added distance or anything like that, no really added carry distance. So, might tell me, you know, that we might have gone a little bit too high and loft. But we were able to get you know direction a little bit mm -hmm. better for you. So pros and cons with you know obviously with changing setting up yeah. around. Normally what I notice less loft on a driver usually you can hit the ball further, but you may not be able to control it as well. So that's always important to okay. pay attention to. Yeah, I mean dispersion wise, the the nine degree G410 LST you know is obviously the best one up there. But yeah. I was on, I'm very surprised by some of the the forgiveness of the G410 LST, especially when we moved it up a degree, because some of those, I mean, I didn't strike those very solid at all on that, especially when we moved it up. A couple of those just felt off the toe, uh, a little clanky, whatever it was, and I was still able to, you know, compete or not exceed the distance of those other ones. Yeah, hmm. no. So in nice and straight, end of the day, we want, we want that on most yeah, assets. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right, Thomas, I think the big takeaway, f at least for me, is for some reason, I was able to square up the G410 LST both at yeah, 9 degrees uh, and at 10 degrees just way better on a more consistent basis than I am with my G30 right now. Yeah, I think it might have come back down to even the, these turbulators. You talked about how they look a little sharper, mm -hmm. a little easier to maybe see versus yours. You know, they're, they're down there designed to help line yourself up a little bit. You know, you're leaving your club face 5 degrees open with the G30. You're only leaving about 1 degree open with um, with the, the G410. Yeah. Now, your club path was in and out, so the bull was definitely withdrawing, but 
it wasn't in, in and out so enough for this ball here, this club to release over as yeah. much as it was. So it was staying wide open. It was going to the right with the G30. Maybe, maybe it was just the fact that you just this this alignment helped you get that ball that club yeah. straight up a little bit. It could be as simple as that. I, I'm not. We won't know, but we do know that the numbers suggested that I was able to hit the ball straighter uh, with a little bit more of a draw uh, with the G410 LST than with this. I mean, like I said right before we were hitting, uh, that my miss with this driver has been kind of that spinny, sort of ballooning one to the right. And we saw a couple of them right away. Yep. Um, so I definitely like the fact that I can get rid of that um, and kind of keep that ball flight a little bit lower than you know, some of those were 120, 130 feet in the air. I like that I was able to keep it lower, even on miss hits, and still get the distance that I wanted. Yeah, it's interesting. You bring up miss hits. Your smash factor with the G30 was actually higher than any other driver that we yeah. hit. It was at 1.50. Right. However, forgiveness. You know, with driver that's made in 2019, you know, it's going to be a little more forgiving, higher MOI than, for example, the G30 might be. You know, it was mm -hmm. only a 1.48 smash, 1.46 smash. Sorry. 1.46 smash right. with the 10 and 9 degree drivers, but it was flying straighter and going just as far. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to it, it was flying straighter and it was also more forgiving too. So. Yeah, I think that shows a little bit of maybe the importance of updating your driver and coming in to get fit as well. Uh, I didn't really know what I was missing out on with, you know, I guess four to five years of a difference in technology with my driver, but clearly I'm missing out on, you know, maybe squaring my club face a little bit. Uh, maybe a little bit more forgiveness as well. So Culver's out there, if you're like me and you've been using the same driver for four to five years um, and using it a lot like I have, uh, maybe it's time to come in to a second swing, talk to somebody like Thomas Campbell and, and see if yours, there's extra yards, extra forgiveness, whatever it is that you're missing uh, off the tee. Thomas, thanks for helping me out today.